Right, so I was going to work on some other things today, um, like starting a new app or some other other things. Uh, but it looks like Rails 7.2 is out, and I mean, normally I usually don't bother upgrading until you know a few weeks a few weeks in. Uh, but these are one of those things that if you put it off, um, you kind of the more you put it off, uh, the more the more difficult it is to get to it. And also, the apps that I have been working on are all quite small, so I don't think that they'll be too difficult to update. So what I'm gonna do in this video is try to upgrade one of my apps, I guess uh, the headless CMS that I have, into Rails uh, 7.2. Now, before this video, I sort of looked at what the new features are. And it looks um, relatively simple. I mean, I don't really know what the breaking changes are, but it seems like it's mostly new features, um, some changes in, in default, uh, default settings, uh, like, uh, well, this is a new feature, you can now put minimum browser versions uh, for your uh, for your Rails app, which is kind of cool. Uh, but usually, I'm not sure how useful this is because in actual production apps that are live, you just tell your customers that, hey, we don't support this browser or we don't support this browser version. Um, but, you know, I guess this makes it more explicit at the code level. Um, I don't know what uh, it says <laughs> if it... If it doesn't meet the, the condition, you just get a 406, which is kind of, I don't know, it, it seems a little rude uh, to just throw a 406 uh, if, if you don't meet the, the browser version. But instead of at least, you know, if you don't meet the browser version, usually at least it renders. And most of the time you have a, a website that's kind of useful, it's still usable. But just throwing a 406 seems, seems pretty, Cruel, but hey, I mean it's, a, it's still a um, it's still a you know, neat little feature. But just looking through this, it doesn't seem like there's that many uh, breaking changes. So actually, I have still haven't even looked at the change logs. Um, but again, I'm going from seven point one to seven point two, so it's not a it's not really a big upgrade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just wing it to see if it's an easy upgrade or an, or a difficult upgrade. So first things first, I'm gonna go into my gem file. I'm gonna take a look at this and I'm just gonna pump this up to rail 7.2 like this and then just bundle like this. And let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. And I think there is, I mean, rails, apps come with a rake task that you can run. It's called app update probably. All right, so actually let me take a look at this. Blah, 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 7.2 requires 3.1 or newer. I got 3.3.4, that's not an issue. Uh, so I'm going to just run this rake task. Bundle exec Rails app update. And um, I'm going to just say, actually, before doing this, I'm just going to create a new branch for this. And I'll say Rails 7 upgrade. And I'm just going to do the same thing here, 7.2 bundle. And then just also run the update app again. Now, one thing I like to do technically, what you can do here is uh, you can either choose to overwrite your configuration files. And you have a couple options here. You can do yes, no. I don't really know what any of these means, but you can also put M, which I believe means modify. Or, I mean, you try to merge it in. And then when you merge things in, you can see the diff, and then you can try to 
you know, pick and choose the changes that you want to apply for the new 7.2 into your current 7.1 configuration file. But I've always found the merge tool to be a little, little cumbersome and difficult to work with. And or maybe it's because I don't, I don't want to bother learning it. Uh, so what I like to do is I just like to do yes, yes, just overwrite everything. And then uh, I guess there are some migrations here, right? So I'm just going to run all the migrations like this, right? And speaking of like, all, since all these rail, ra all these are rake tasks, rake tasks are running properly. It means that there's probably no crazy configuration uh, conflicts that's uh, preventing from Rails commands from running, prop running like starting up and running. So that's a good sign. So what I like to do is I just like to say uh, initial Rails 7.2 upgrade, and then I like to push up this branch. And when I here, what I like to do is I like to compare, like open up the pull request. And this way, I find that this is much easier for me to wrap my head around. Maybe it's because I, I look at this screen more often and I'm just used to it. But instead of that merge tool and that command line merge tool, uh, this is just much easier for me to look at. So I can see that, okay, only thing that changed in the gem file is Rails. And then gem file lock is obviously changed. I guess the uh, breakman is a new gem by default that's baked in, right? I think I read that somewhere in 7.2. So add breakman by default to new applications. But I wonder if that was added in the gem file lock. Hold on. No, it wasn't. Um, I wonder if these commands will even run. I don't think so. I think I have to add breakman, breakman into the gem file, but I'm probably not gonna, this isn't important for now, so I'm just gonna sk skip it. So there's a bin setup. Most of this stay the same, except some lines were added here. Uh, application, some syntax was changed. The, these lines were removed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this because my active job, uh, queue adapter is good job. And I mean, these are things that I added before and I wanted one in there. So, and the, and it was overwritten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the application RB and add those back in. Uh, and in config development, I have... Most of this looks reasonable. Okay, so there's that. Action mailer. Okay, so environment slash development RV looks fine. This doesn't look fine because things were changed. So for example, I was uploading assets to active storage assets to AWS3, so that was overwritten by the new default production environment file, so I'm gonna open up that. And this, see, where is it? Uh, active storage, ah, line 40, right? So I'm gonna flip this back into Amazon, and yada, yada, yada. So the mailer options were removed. So I'm gonna add that back in right here. And s looks like I, now I'm gonna get this test. And now I'm gonna keep these new defaults. Initializers, parameter logging, it looks like email was added here. I don't know what that's for, but I'll just keep it because it's the new default. Um, the inflections file was overwritten, so I'm gonna open that and I'm going to re-enable it and 
add back the API that I had there. Now there's new framework defaults. All right, so I'm gonna skip that for now. Uh, the Puma file was overwritten, but really I didn't really play around with this. I'm just gonna keep the new default. And some new migrations, I guess, I guess for active storage and, and, and other things, which uh, I don't think is important for the upgrade. Now, with that, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to run my specs, right? And I'm gonna boot up the app like this and make sure that it runs. So now it, yeah, it looks like it's running fine. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this new initializers, new framework defaults file. And also I'm gonna open up the config application RB. And so right now, even though I'm running Rails 7.2. In the application file, I'm telling Rails to load this, the defaults for Rails 7.1. And when you do these kind of upgrades, if you run the Rails app update task, you'll get this file here in config initializers new framework defaults. And these will all have, these will have individual new defaults that you can toggle on one by one. So one example is right, let's see, right here, it said, okay, so this is the first configuration. So one change that looks like it was made for Rails 7.2 is that you can't, you can't uh, queue up background jobs inside a transaction, which, you know, it makes sense. So for example, in this, in this example here, I'm just gonna uncomment this so that syntax highlighting works. So in this example here, you're trying to create a topic inside a transaction and that, and then inside the transaction, you are queuing up a job, a background job with that supposedly created topic new topic record. The problem with this is that let's say something breaks here, right? Some error happens here, like, I don't know, a field is missing, whatever. And this topic is actually not saved into the database so that it is not a valid record. And now you are trying to queue up a background job that relies on this topic being a valid record. Well, then this will break as well, right? So this isn't, this isn't, um, this is like brittle, brittle code. So Rails is trying, I guess they're trying to help you uh, prevent things like this from happening. So, um, one thing is like, you wanna do is you wanna say, like the, the default configuration for this is under active job and then queue after transaction commit and this is the default and obviously this default is for 7.2. Uh, and if you, the other one, the other configuration that you can set it to if you want, let's say if you want this background job to be queued up after you know, even if the topic, creating the topic fails, is I can, I guess you can set this to never, which is what it says here. Um, but again, that's that's not the real 7.2 default. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this to default. But let's say, you know, for example, for whatever reason you want, you want the old behavior, which is to set this to never. You, all you have to do is you go in here and you say, I don't know, you might comment this like real 7.1 defaults carried over. And you can say config um, active job like this, and then say never like this, and it'll just you know keep the old behavior. But we don't wanna do that, so we'll flip that on. And 
we'll run the tests again and we'll see that everything passes. Now in a typical more professional environment, let's say you're working on an actual app that runs a, a, a real business or, or a bigger app, um, it wouldn't be this simple. Like I, I done probably spent the past few months doing just doing Rails upgrades. I, I got a Rails app from Rails 5 to 7.1. And every time you flip one of these defaults over everything, all the tests would break and things would break. So it, it's not as easy as it looks in a, t in a, in a real production level app or a bigger app um, or more older code bases. But you know this is a relatively small app and it's fresh. Um, so it's going smooth, but just, just so that you know, it doesn't, if you, once you flip this, ideally you not only want the test to pass, but you put it through pretty rigorous QA so that when you deploy these changes to production, you are relatively confident that everything works. So anyways, uh, you flip that on and it looks like this is another default that has changed. So um, prevents, I mean, I'm not even gonna, this probably doesn't even apply to me. So I'm just gonna enable it. This is what validation of, this is enable validation of migration timestamps. Um, I don't even know what that means. Um, I'm sure it's not super important. So I'm gonna enable that as well. And this is another configuration. It says control whether the PostgreSQL adapter should decode dates automatically with manual queries. And probably not relevant to me either. And this is a new default. So it enables, never learned how to pronounce this, widget. So I think it's the just-in-time compiler for Ruby 3.3. So hold on, widget, widget 3.3 will be a, okay. Seems like it's whatever that makes Ruby 3.3 much faster. So what we'll do is we'll enable that to be true. Uh, if you, it says if you're deploying this to a memory constrained environment, you want to set this to, all right, whatever. We'll set this to true and see how it does in our Heroku uh, instance. So I'm gonna also run the specs again. And now I'm going to say enabled all 7.2 defaults. And I'm going to push this to my branch and I'm gonna say git push Heroku uh, Heroku no, no, no. Eh, git push Heroku main how do you do that hold on because I want basically what I want to do is I, I want to push this branch into Heroku the main branch, so hold on. Git push Heroku different branch onto main branch. Uh, the way you do that is, okay, git push Heroku rail 7.2 upgrade into the main branch of Heroku. And the reason I wanna do this is in a typical, well, ideally what I do is I, I run, <laughs> I, I try loading this in the local environment first. I'm, I'm definitely not taking this seriously because it's a small app and no one's really using it right now. So I'm kind of winging it. But ideally, you know, you log in and then you click around a bit, make sure that everything kind of loads and works. Um, and then you, in the typical team environment, you would push this onto uh, onto your separate branch, 
make a pull request, hey, ask for reviews, but I don't have anyone to ask reviews for because this is just me. And then you push the branch onto a staging environment, which I don't have. So what I'm doing is I'm just pushing the branch, this branch into the main production environment, which, you know, not the best practice, but it's fast. I don't really want to spin up a staging environment just for a small app like this, which, you know, if something goes wrong, small app, I can fix it quick. And all you do is you test things around, you click around, and uh, you try logging in, make sure that everything works. And after you're relatively sure that everything works, you, for the Rails upgrade, what I like to do is I like to go into the application file like this and say config load default 7.2 and then say set load defaults to 7.2, push again and then deploy to Heroku again. Now, the reason I'm not deleting this uh, yet, and I'm not deleting this line, is because sometimes I've seen cases where this new framework defaults file doesn't include every single new default and unexpected thing. Like even if, even after you enable all the defaults here, and then you up, bump this up. Um, I've seen things break because maybe this new framework defaults file doesn't account for all the new new defaults in the new new Rails version. So I always like to bump this up separately after testing this, after enabling enabling all of this, testing it, and then I like to bump this up and then you know test it out. Click around, make sure that everything works. Ah, it looks like looks like um, everything works right and then finally i like to delete this file here and then remove this line right here because that's not necessary Cool, now I'm gonna say remove new framework defaults file and deploy to Heroku again. Now there's two ways of going about this. If you are working on a serious app is a uh, rolling back changes can be kind of a hassle, right? So I've seen two ways, I've seen different ways other teams, like different teams handle it. Um, in a more half-assed way might be something I'm doing now. I'm deploying 7.2 branch onto the main branch on Heroku so that that's what's up on production. And let's say, I don't know, I leave it running for a day or two and I see something break, like I see an exception on app signal, right? I see an exception here that's related to the, the new, Rails up, new Rails app upgrade. Rather than, if it's an emergency, rather than trying to fix it, you can simply go back to the main branch and then just, you know, bump, you know, push that to Heroku so that the main branch that doesn't have Rails 7.2 upgrade just takes over um, so that the customer problems are solved. But in this case, I'm relatively confident. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to merge this in and just push these new changes onto Heroku so that the Heroku, Heroku actually has the main branch. So 
so that it doesn't have any other branches. So local branch here, 7.2 branch, I'm just going to delete it. And it is being upgraded. It's being deployed. And now, make sure that production still loads, which it does, and our little toy app has just been upgraded to Rails 7.2 from Rails 7.1 successfully. So um, I'm going to end the video here and just off camera, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the upgrade to my Jira Daily app and also the good old Russian dictionary app. So if you found this entertaining, uh, thanks for watching and subscribe and wait for the next one.